Before the video begins, I just want to say congratulations to my boy Fabi, Mr. Fabian Scheipner, for not only getting on this season of Ninja Warrior Germany, but making it all the way to the first stage. Congratulations, my friend. I've been following you for quite some time. You know, Instagram, Discord, we've been buddies for a while. And I can't wait to see what you're doing next season and how far you go. Hello everybody, it is Kane, not Kasugi, here today reviewing one of the final ninja shows of 2023, Ninja Warrior Germany Season 8. Now those who know me know that I am a huge fan of Ninja Warrior Germany. It's one of my more favorite shows overall. From the stretch of Season 1 to Season 6, I was really, really happy with the quality of the show. Season 7, I think, was just a slight step down, but it was still a good season. And now we get to Season 8, and... No, in all seriousness, this wasn't a bad season by any means. It just lacked in a lot of areas, but also did some really good things as well. So let's get into it. I'll start off with what they did good. I'm always going to praise Ninja Warrior Germany's editing, uh, because they have three-hour episodes, and they just push things along. Fluff pieces for every competitor is maybe one to two minutes, and then you go right into the next competitor, and then the next competitor, and the next competitor. It's very fast, and you get a lot of action for the amount of time that this episode has. The qualifier courses were much better than last season, in my opinion. Last season, they tried to throw in a lot of pumpy technical obstacles that took a lot of time, kind of dragged out the qualifiers just a little bit. This season, they still had like one or two obstacles that were like that, Carnival being the slowest obstacle. But overall, they were pretty quick and speedy obstacles. They were freezing through the courses, especially the ones that knew what they were doing. And I was generally pretty happy with the qualifiers. The top four from the qualifiers of every episode would then compete on the Super Salmon ladder. And this is when I started to notice that there were significant budget cuts. The budget cuts weren't necessarily bad because you, obviously you still have a full course. It's just that it looked cheap when qualifiers was used for stage one and then was used for stage three. And you can very clearly tell that they were running out of space, mats, pieces. It was just eh. And while the Super Salmon Ladder at the end of the qualifiers was really fun to watch, the Super Salmon Ladder itself just, it quite literally looked like the Walmart version of the final stage. It just didn't look all that intimidating. Like when you think of Ninja Warrior in Towers, you think intimidating. Uh, not really here. The biggest problem I had with the qualifiers and later on the semifinals and the whole rest of the season were the commentators. The commentators were very clearly not there to talk about Ninja Warrior. They were... You know, they are comedians, but you could tell that they were basically just there because they wanted to do stand-up on a show. And so they just, uh, yeah. Now look, they've always done this. This is nothing really new to the show. It was just dialed up to an 11 this season, and I really couldn't stand it. Because why do we have a piano at the commentator booth for in-between runs to try and be funny, and really only one of the hosts is laughing at himself? He's not even making the other people laugh around him. And then when the competitors are actually running the course, they will run two whole obstacles in complete silence with the exception of the crowd cheering. Like that's just horrible commentary. And that carries into the semifinals, which besides the commentary, I would have quite enjoyed the semifinals. It was a good course. It was fast paced. There were a lot of shock fails. And I, I really enjoyed being able to feel something when watching a ninja show. You had cash prizes for the top three. You had water walls, which surprisingly worked. The money also meant that the speed pass winners had something to run for without taking spots away in the finals from other people. I thought that worked really well too. But when the last man standing of last season, Max Gurner, falls on the first obstacle of the semifinals in a move that like it just shocked everybody, the commentators were just like so nonchalant about it. And it really took out big moments like that because if you had the reigning last man standing fall anywhere else, if you had Vance Walker fall, Daniel Gill, Ben Polson, Charlie Robbins, Renee Cassidy, like if they fell, people would be like, oh my gosh, no, what? What's going on? This time they were just like, now why did he fall on that? Hmm, okay, well, I guess we move on. What? It was hands down the shock of the season and it was played off horribly, as was the rest of the commentary throughout the entire season. Then we get to the finals. Stage one, I thought was done really well. It was a good course. It was chaotic. It was technical. It was speedy. And people were falling in places I wasn't expecting them to fall. Who would have thought pole graspers 
would have been a ninja killer on the same course as Salmon Roll. Stage 1 delivered a lot of big shocks. Alexander Worm, for the first time, fell on Stage 1. Moritz Hans, for the first time in years, fell on Stage 1. And at the end of the day, Stage 1, out of 30-something people, only 7 people cleared, which I thought was crazy. But I also really enjoyed the episode as a whole because I wasn't sure who was going to clear or when we were going to get one. These are all very capable athletes. It was just shocking on this course as a whole. And then we get to the last episode, by far the worst episode of the season. This isn't really the fault of anyone. I mean, we had stage two, three, and four all in the last episode. I guess if I had to blame anyone, it would be the network. Because there were seven stage two runs, there were six stage three runs, and then one final stage run. That is a total of 14 runs on a course through the entire three hour episode. Imagine watching a Sasuke tournament and you only get 14 runs the entire time. That's, that's what we got. And I guess it's the network's fault because, you know, they booked them for a three hour time slot and it's like, you don't need three hours. You barely even need two for that amount of runs. So what did they do to fill the time slots? They just, they went on and on with interviews and on and on with bad commentary, bad comedy from the commentators. It was, it was hard to watch. We really watched one person do stage three, and then it went to commercials, and then another person did stage three, and then it went to commercials, and then we got to the final stage. Honestly, this show would be much higher in my rankings if it wasn't for this last episode, because it really did bring down the quality of the season overall. Given that it's the finale, this is the last taste of the season I have in my mouth. It's not the greatest. But regardless, congratulations to Philip Gothard for not only making it to the final stage after four straight appearances on stage three, but showing us that it is doable to beat this final stage in 30 seconds. The only reason I don't think he got super close to the buzzer was because he choked a muscle up going from the sand ladder to the rope. There's, there's definitely a better strategy. Yusuke Morimoto has shown us that. But, I mean, it was still a decent run, and I do think that we could get a Ninja Warrior Germany champion in the near future. So those are my overall thoughts on Season 8 of Ninja Warrior Germany. It wasn't a bad season, but it, the flaws were especially more prevalent this season than in seasons past. Comment below what you thought of it, comment below what you want to see out of Season 9, and of course be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share, is that how it goes? Yeah, do that stuff. Thank you guys for watching, I'll see you in the next one.